here we have uh, moving on to the electricians okay uh, why do I call them electricians well because these people in general you know they've um, worked with equipment resistors uh, voltage amp meters etc and so these folks, uh, you know, in general, uh, they are against the establishment. They, they don't like a lot of the theories out there, or they didn't like a lot of them are dead now. And so they proposed a different world. But the question is whether what they proposed is any more rational than what's out there today, uh, officially, you know, mathematical physics. And so all these fellows, you know, they're, um, they're famous dissidents, okay, in general, okay. Some of them are alive, uh, <clears throat> most of them are dead. They've gone by, in fact, uh, Walt Thornhill there. Um, he died, I think, in February of this year. And I still have him as a friend in, um, in Facebook. Uh, we became friends a long time ago in Facebook. Uh, we never talked. I never had a chat with him or anything, never met the guy. Uh, but I have listened to a lot of his uh, speeches, his uh, dissertations, and so I know pretty much what he's proposing, at least in general terms. You know, I'm, I'm not interested in more details if he doesn't make sense as it is. So, uh, you know, he's, he's talked about a lot of stuff uh, from the electric universe, and no, under no circumstances do I accept any of that stuff. Okay, uh, again, a uh, scientist is not a critic. And we were all dissidents in that sense. We criticize the establishment, no problem. But then the question is, you know, under what um, arguments are you criticizing the establishment? That's one issue. And the other one is, what do you propose in exchange, which is really more important? You know, a scientist is not the critic who's in the stands watching the fight. The scientist is the guy who's boxing. So the guy, the critic, says, oh, you should have hit him with the left hand and yeah, yeah, why don't you get up there? <laughs> okay? Yeah, a scientist is the guy who fights, the guy who proposes, the guy who's, you know, in the thick of things, not, not the guy who's out there criticizing. So criticizing is no problem, you know, it's great. But again, um, uh, the issue there also is that if you have a irrational argument, then even your criticism is worthless. So not only does your criticism have to be rational, that's one issue, but then you have to propose something in exchange, something rational that is scientific. You got to propose a mechanism. How does this universe work? If you can't answer that question, you, you're not a scientist, you're not a physicist. Okay, okay so um, here we have, um, this is what they do. There are a lot of people do, uh, of these uh, electricity, electricians, they deal with oscilloscopes and uh, um, bulk meters and amp meters and so on. They like to measure things. And in that sense, they are quite, in, in a sense, like the establishment. And it is because these people emphasize all this, um, all this stuff that, all their experience in the lab, that they uh, think that they have enough uh, arguments to debunk the establishment. Okay, so that's more or less what's going through their heads. And these people love gadgets, especially electronic gadgets. And here are a couple of examples. I'm going to put these up here so that you can see what these people are into. You know, they move these magnets around. They uh, look at the uh, lines that they make. Okay, at the, uh, what? Uh, lines of force. <laughs> okay. And uh, here's, a, here's another one. Let me show you this one. Okay. And they move these uh, magnets around. They show you how it affects the magnetic field or the lines of force. They play around with all this stuff. And they love it. And, and this is what they put on the Internet and they put on the uh, YouTube. You know, so they take up a lot of space with showing you a lot of these things. A lot of them are just for selling products. Some of them are just to show you something neat. And, um, and here you have another one. Let me show you this one. Okay, These are little gadgets that all these people love. And this is what th these people are a lot about. You know, Here you see what this fellow does with this. He built this uh, little track and moves around. 
and he shows how the magnets keep this thing rolling around forever. Okay, great. Levitron or whatever they call it. Here's another one, final one. Okay, they love all these gadgets. Okay, so what's the problem with all this? Well, the problem with all this is that not a one person explains how that magic is done, the magic you're observing there. Okay, and uh, and this is the issue. How how do the how does Mother Nature do this? Uh, these magic, these magic tricks, and they never explain it. They just show it. And they, I've done science. You know, I've, I've shown a magic trick, and it's a wondrous chick, trick that you cannot explain. Well, can you explain it? The guy who showed it, and of course they can't. And so, what's the purpose of taking up, uh, you know, space? On the internet showing all these things getting lots of hits you know and not explaining the trick how do you do that trick you know a magician can do a trick and if you press him hard enough maybe if you torture him you know waterboard him or whatever uh, maybe he'll tell you how the trick uh, is done well I would like to waterboard some of these people to see if they could tell me you know how the trick is done do you think they would be able to and the answer is no. They have no idea how that trick is done. They just want to show you how fancy, how great it is. And this is this is the problem. A lot of these people take up the airwaves with nonsense, and none of them explain it. And that's part of the problem that we see with these electrical, electric universe folk and uh, people like Ken Wheeler and so on. They don't explain nothing. <laughs> they have no idea how any of this stuff works. They just invent words. Uh, they use they move concepts around. They don't even realize it. Okay, so here's, um, uh, this is how the electricians in general, you know, some of those people I just mentioned, uh, why they don't like relativity. And I guess the main problem is time. They don't like special relativity and they don't like general relativity. They don't like time dilation, length contraction, mass increase. They don't agree with any of that stuff in general. You know, something there, you've got all kinds of dissidents out there, right? Uh, they reject uh, general relativity, you know, space, time, warp, space, black holes, dark matter. They reject all that stuff. Nuclear sun, no, the sun doesn't, uh, according to them, is not powered by nuclear um, fusion process. Wormholes, multiverse, you know, all that stuff, they reject it completely, okay? Um, black hole, dark matter, etc. they say those are all electromagnetic causes, okay? Uh, Big Bang. They say it never happened, but then they propose, you know, some nonsense. Uh, but electricity etched the mountains of and channels of Mars, and our wiser forefathers documented these events. So they bring all this mythology, at least the electric universe does, right? And they say that, you know, uh, all our forefathers were so intelligent, we lost all that knowledge. <laughs> okay, they probably saw ETs, you know, the ones who built the pyramids, you know, okay. Um, gravity, electromagnetic causes, again, and a uh, great part of the reason for that is they believe that it's the same equation, Newton's equation matches, you know, the uh, electromagnetic equation, where you have a constant times charge, charge divided by distance squared, well, that pretty much resembles, you know, the gravitational constant G, mass 1, mass 2 divided by distance squared, so it looks like uh, gravity is really an electromagnetic phenomenon. And the problem there is they don't know what electromagnetic is. They don't know what electricity is. They don't know what magnetism is, but they just want to do it through equations, okay? And then, so all that you can offer is irrational rejoinders, you know, for everything that the establishment has. And so people say, well, Bill, why don't you join them? You're, you're all against the establishment. You're all, you're all dissidents. You're, you're all fighting mathematical physics. Yeah, but uh, we don't agree on hardly anything, even in the arguments that we raise against the establishment. So the fact that we all criticize the establishment does not put me in the same boat as they do, as they're in. Okay? I'm in a different boat altogether. Okay? Uh, I have a totally different uh, proposal for how the universe works, and therefore my arguments against the establishment are completely different than anybody else out there. You know, Ken Wheeler, uh, uh, the, uh, what is it, the... Um, uh, John Chappelle uh, Society, which uh, a lot of them deal with ether, uh, the electric universe, all these groups out there and others that maybe I don't even know about, they, um, they criticize it on the wrong foundations, on the wrong basis. Why? Because they're proposing exactly the same thing as the establishment. 
What is the problem? Well, here, uh, hopefully I can synthesize it for you here. Okay, this is more or less why I'm not in the same boat as they are. You know, uh, the electricians, they have the same notion of science and the scientific method than uh, the establishment. They learned it at the same schools, at the same monasteries. Okay, they all went to the same high school, the same colleges. And so they come up with the same notion of science. And we're saying that the science that they, all these people do that we've been doing for the last 400 years has nothing at all to do with science. So we, we reject it completely. Uh, they harp on experiments, prediction, observation, evidence, proof, and math. We reject all those, every single one of those. None of those have anything to do with science. Science is not about running experiments because experiments are only used to persuade people to, to produce evidence, essentially, right? And then to try to convince people. That's not what we do in science. In science, we uh, present an, a mechanism, in the case of physics, right? We present a mechanism objectively so the person understands the mechanism, the causes, and then we're done. That's the end of science. What continues is belief, you know, whether you believe it or not, and that's personal and that's got nothing to do with science. So we do not convince, we do not persuade in science. What we do, we do that. We're all human, so we tend to do that, but that's not the point of science. That part is the religion part of the dissertation. The, the strictly scientific part is just objective mechanism. That's what it is. Uh, they use the same language. They parrot the same language, all these people. You know, they have the same uh, exact words uh, that they learned from the same people, okay? The, 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 the people they criticize, right? So the electricians, they criticize the mathematical establishment, but then they use the same words. And there you see some of them, plasma, ether, field, wave, charge, vert, uh, vortex. They love Birkeland currents, electricity, you know, th these are their words. But they also use a whole bunch of ad uh, words that, um, that the mathematical establishment uses, you know, like mass and, uh, um, well, field there, you see force and so on. And all those words, none of those words belong in physics. None of those words. They're all concepts. We do not move concepts. Plasma is a concept, ether is a concept, field is a concept, wave is a concept, and so on down the line. All those are concepts. Electricity is a concept. It's not a physical object. Okay, and uh, it takes 10 years for these people to understand that. Okay, electricity is not a physical object. And people say, well, stick your f fingers in, uh, in the outlet and find out if it, if it gives you a kick. Well, yeah, again, it's not see touch is not the criteria for determining objects. Okay, you don't know what you touched. Oh, you know, you got a shock and you don't know even why. Okay. Anyways, um, uh, they invoke the same uh, quantum mechanical structural models, you know, the atom, the electron, proton, they have the planetary model. So ionization, they explain it in the same way, you know, the electron bead flies away, electricity is uh, flowing beads, you know, around the wire. Uh, they talk about positive and negative, you know, one attracting the other, positive rejects positive, negative rejects negative and so on. Uh, and they typically have attraction via pressure. Why? Because they know <laughs> that they, can't, they, they don't have an elongated object between any the two uh, test objects. So they have to produce it through pressure because they can never produce the force of pull. They never invented the force of pull in mathematical physics. We do not have the force of pull for the last 10,000 years. Nobody can explain the force of pull because in order to do so, you need an elongated object that mediates between two objects. And that's why we don't have the force of pull today anywhere in mathematical physics or in the dissident world. The definitions, you know, they reject them as semantics and word salad and ontology and all that. They say, no, that's philosophy. I didn't come here to do philosophy. I came here to do physics, you know. Uh, field, uh, they say the field is an object and it exists, whereas the lines of force, they don't exist. They're just uh, tools for visualization. Okay, so this is the problem. The problem is that uh, the, math, the critics they use the same language essentially as the establishment. They have the same concept. They use the same atom, and we reject all of that. We have a different atom. We have a different uh, mediator for light. You know, here it is. Looks like this. Looks like a rope. Nobody has ever proposed that on planet Earth. Okay, so we have a totally different uh, theory, hypothesis, and theory. We have totally different assumptions about how the universe is and how it works. And so we're not in the same boat as all these electricians. We're completely different than them. 
And we also criticize the establishment on the, from a different angle. We don't use the same words that these people do. These people try to prove that the establishment is wrong. We do not prove. We say they're irrational because we define these words and we say that under rationality, you people are not part of science. You, you don't belong in science at all, completely out, because all, this, all your language is irrational, therefore your theories are irrational. And your vision of how this universe is, you know, what exists out there and how it works is completely, you know, bogus. So, so we're not on the same boat as all these dissonance. We don't care if we're all criticizing the establishment. We're not on the same boat with them. Okay, they're totally different people. Okay, um, here we have some examples. Let's see if I can get this thing up there. Okay, this is uh, Walt Thornhill, and like I said, he died a couple months ago, and. Uh, and not a bad guy, but he was completely mistaken about how this universe works. He was not a physicist. He was a metaphysical, uh, if you can call him that, not even that. Because, um, you know, he, he tried to engage like so many other people, like Ayn Rand, for example, and so many others who dealt with, um, with physics without knowing. And what does he say? Well, here's just an example, okay? He says, uh, there's the speed of light, okay? Depends on the medium. And of course, we know that light slows down when it goes through air and water. If the density of the medium of space changes, then the speed of light will vary. Okay? Uh, absolutely wrong. Okay? He's got that completely wrong. Light always travels at the same speed between any two atoms, irrespective of the medium. Uh, it doesn't matter where the atom is in the universe. Light travels always at the same speed between any two atoms. Why? Because it's torsion along a rope. And that's why the uh, wave equation, C equals frequency times wavelength, is a constant. Because only a rope can imitate uh, that equation. That's why the wave equation is the equation of a rope and nothing but a rope. There can't be any other thing that can imitate that wave equation. Certainly not particles, certainly not one-way waves, you know, which are actually not waves, which are, what are these waves? They're vectors, traveling vectors, traveling numbers, magnitude and directions. That's what it is. And then you have the American Museum of Natural History, and they say more or less the following. It says, no matter how you, how you measure it, the speed of light is always the same, which kind of contradicts what uh, Thornhill said here, okay? Light from a moving source has the same velocity as light from a stationary source. In other words, what they're bringing up, they're saying, look, you don't add the speed of light to the moving object like you would like, you know, uh, you're on the train, you throw the ball. The ball, you have to add the, the speed in which the train uh, also is traveling. So you add the speed of the train to the speed of the ball. You can't do that with light. Travel will, light will travel at the same speed irrespective of how fast the train travels. Okay, and that's what they're saying there. Although it might seem logical to add the speed of the light source and the speed of the light beam to determine the total speed of light uh, uh, to the total, speed uh, light does not work in that way. Okay? The speed of light is constant and does not depend on the speed of the light source. Well, we have a problem because one fellow there says the speed of light changes depending on the medium it goes through. These other fellows are saying the speed of light is never added to the speed of the source. Uh, they're talking about two different things, yeah, but uh, both of them are wrong, you know, because, um, well, no, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Natural Museum is not wrong. It's just that they don't know why. They cannot answer why that's the case. They're, they're just making a statement. They're just saying it is so. But they haven't told you why it's so. And neither could Einstein or Poincaré and uh, any uh, Lawrence or any of these people. They could not tell you why. Why can't they tell you why? Because they never identify the mediator of light, which is a rope. With a rope, yeah, you can see why. Okay, um, You know, um, you don't add the speed of, uh, of light to the speed of the source. Because what you have is the uh, atom is sliding through the rope. So you have the atom is uh, pumping and torquing the rope. And as it moves through the rope, it eats into the rope. So it doesn't push the rope, which is what's happening when you throw the ball from the train, from the speeding train. You're in the front of the train, you throw the ball, the ball goes fast, and you have to add the speed of the ball to the speed of the train. 
You can't do that with light because you're sliding through the rope and eating into it as the rope, you know, uh, forms the uh, electron shell and the proton and then continues out the back. So you're kind of sliding through it. That's why the speed of light is not added to the speed uh, of the source, of the atom that's moving. And so we, we can answer all these questions now qualitatively. Okay, you don't have to agree, you don't have to believe, we can answer it and we have a, an explanation. You don't like the explanation, tell us what's wrong with the explanation. Okay, that's what you gotta do. And these people don't even answer why and they can't because you can't simulate what I just said with little particles, with little balls, which is how they talk about when they talk about light, they talk about photons. And then they just in case they say, well, a photon is also a wave. Okay, use a wave, I don't care. Use particles or waves, whichever one you wish to use. Explain with a wave, why does the wave not accelerate when it's coming out of an atom that's accelerating? Because the waves, the electromagnetic waves are, emin, uh, em, em, are emitted by an atom. An atom pumps, this is the official version, atom pumps, right? We have this uh, um, planetary model, and so you have this little B that goes back and forth. When it falls and when it comes out, it, what it does is absorbs and emits radiation, energy, waves, right? Electromagnetic waves. So the wave goes out. So why don't you add that wave, which is going one way, to the speed of the atom that which is going in the same direction? You should, but they're saying you don't, and they're not explaining why you don't. What's the physical reason? What's, what's the cause? Okay, <clears throat> and this is where the problem is. They, they don't tell you why. And so, well, Thornhill was wrong, first of all, because um, uh, atoms always, uh, I'm sorry, light always travels at the same speed between any two atoms. And here you see an example. It's the prism, famous prism that they show. And whether you use particles or waves, you know, why does the... Um, uh, why does the beam of light, which comes in as a maybe white light, why does it break up into all these different colors coming out of the prism? And obviously, if they come out of the uh, prism, uh, we have two problems. The first one is, if they go slower through the prism, what accelerates them once they come out of the prism again? Why do they always travel 300,000 kilometers on both sides of the prism and slower within the prism? In other words, what accelerates them once they leave the prism? That's the question. Okay, that's one issue. The other issue is why do we have colors? If colors are different frequencies, different wavelengths, that's all it is. And the question is why? Why do we have um, red versus blue coming out? Why doesn't white light come out? What breaks it up? Okay, and so you cannot explain these two questions. You cannot really answer them with the wave or the particle model. But with a rope model, it's a cinch. Okay, there you have it. You have the rope coming in, and you have a rope tied to another atom. And we're just going to assume that there's only two atoms there, right? The white and the red, the white and the yellow, the white and the blue. And when it goes to the blue, the blue is a higher frequency, meaning the shorter links, and the red is longer links and fewer links or in other words frequency is lower and um, the wavelength or link length as we call it is longer that's what we have there so it's very easy to understand why because you can see that the distance changes from one to the other so we're done it's very easy does light travel differently in any of those? No. Light is the same speed between any two atoms. Between the white and the red, it's 300,000 kilometers per second. And between the red and whatever comes out, you know, at the other end, another atom that would be over there, also 300,000 kilometers per second. There's no speeding up of light after it comes out of the prism. And that's what these people cannot explain. See here, why does light go uh, at 300,000 kilometers inwards? towards the magnet from left to right, right? Goes slower throughout the prism, and then when it comes out, it goes back to 300,000 kilometers per second. How does it do that? What speeds it up? What is it that makes light go faster when it comes out of the prism? You know, how, why does it accelerate? And here you can see there is no acceleration. It's just always travels at the same speed between any two atoms. What changes is only the frequency versus wavelength, which is the uh, equation of a rope uh, and equation the uh, also the wave so-called wave equation 
Okay, so we have an explanation for all these phenomena, which the establishment does not. And it's a physical interpretation, which they can't give you. They say, well, we don't understand that the Father Universe speaks a different language. We don't understand and we'll never figure it out. We're studying. <laughs> Someday we'll figure it out. You know, no, they never will because they're not even researching these uh, qualitative questions. They're just uh, doing equations. That's all they do. Okay, so here we have another fellow. His name is Ken Wheeler, and, and he's a colorful guy. You know, he's, uh, <laughs> he, uh, you know, uh, he, he has his own little show there. And I have no problem, you know, with his personality. That's, that's great. He, he can be any way he wants. That, that doesn't affect me at all. It affects a lot of people out there, but to me, it doesn't affect me at all. He can be arrogant. He can be, uh, you know, cussing people out. No problem. The question is, what is the bottom line, Ken? I mean, what is this fellow proposing? What, what does he, what, what, how does he think the universe works? That's, that's the bottom line. That's what we want to understand. And he goes in there, and this is out of his video. There it is, The Engine of Magnetism. You can look him up. If you understand magnetism fully as the flip side of the coin of dielectricity, you understand both. You really can understand 95% of nature. Okay, great. Great statement. Great beginning. Let's see how much we understand. Centrifugal uh, divergence, centripetal convergence is the fight between the magnetic and the dielectric. Okay, whatever you said there. Okay, charge discharge, centrifugal, uh, centripetal, uh, spatial or counterspatial. Okay, when we're talking about something spatial, we're talking about the release of energy. Mm, I wonder where he got that word energy. Maybe he invented it. The release of force. I wonder where he got that word force. The creation of the toroidal field of magnetism field. I wonder where you get these words, energy, force, and field. That's what he's going to be moving. He's going to be kicking the energy and, uh, you know, throwing the field and moving the uh, force. Increasing inertia and acceleration towards its greater energy. In other words, the inverse of the dissipation of energy. And yeah, you can listen to him all day and you won't understand squat because he doesn't understand what he's saying. And again, it's not about his personality. It's got to do with what he's, what's coming out of his mouth which is nonsense. And um, his videos are a lot better than his book. I mean, I started reading his book and I read almost halfway. I don't think I met it halfway, but close to halfway. And I've never read a book like that. Uh, you don't understand. You cannot possibly understand what he wrote. It's just all gobbledygook. <laughs> it's not, you cannot understand any paragraph. You don't know what he's saying. He's talking there. He's just blabbing, throwing out words. And it's worse than, I thought, I thought the book would be a lot better than uh, what he has on his show. You know, he's got a, a, a YouTube site and he, uh, he talks a lot of nonsense on the, on the waves. But I said, well, his book, he's got more time to think about it. You know, he's going to be writing it. <laughs> no, it's even worse. The book, his writing is worse than his talking. He talks better than his, he writes. And it's all gobbledygook. It's just nonsense everything that comes out of his mouth. So all these dissidents, the fact that, you know, he criticizes the establishment. Okay, fine. He says, look, you know, space time is garbage, dark matter, dark uh, black holes, no problem. But what is his argument? And that's when you look at his arguments, you say, no, this guy's talking nonsense. That's all coming out of his mouth. So the fact that he criticizes the establishment does not put me in the same boat as him or Walt Thornhill or any of these people. You know, they, their criticism is nonsense. And what they propose is even bigger nonsense than the establishment in great measure because they use the same language as the establishment. And as long as they move concepts around, they're going to be just as irrational or even worse than the establishment. So, you know, all I can tell you is, <laughs> no, no, we're not in the same boat with any of these people. The electricians, they have a different world, a different universe, but everything they propose is just garbage, nonsense.